So just quickly, time series. Um, it's the same as a regular scatter plot, except our explanatory variable x um, is time and we connect data points with lines. So as you can see there, we have all our data points and we connect them together. Most of the time, time series plots look pretty messy and this makes them hard to read. So we make, we st when we want to look at the trends of them, we decide that, why don't we smooth them out? <coughs> Apologies, I'm like stuck in the back of my throat. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so we want to smooth them out. And so by doing that, what we're going to look at is two methods, mean smoothing, median smoothing. Now, I hope you've all done this by now because I'm not going to spend too much time, but smoothing via mean, pretty straightforward. You get, so this is a three mean moving speed, uh, smooth, three mean moving smooth mean, whatever you call it. It's using three, three values. So what you do is you go, all right, I want this value, this value, this value, add them together, divide them by three. <coughs> I get my value. I would then move on and go, all right, 613, so I go like six plus 13 plus 14, and I would divide that by three. I'd go to the next one, I go six plus 14 plus 6.5, and I divide it by three. And I get a data value here and here. I'm not gonna get a data value here because there's not three pieces of information. There's not a piece of information here, so I can't go one, two, three. Same down here, I'm not gonna be able to get one here. Now, you can also do this for um, five mean smooth, five <coughs> mean smoothing and four mean smoothing. Now, four mean smoothing is complicated. So I'll explain why. We'll do six in the middle here. We'll do three, or well, technically three. So to do a four mean smoothing, <coughs> what am I gonna choose? Am I gonna choose one above and two below or one below and two above? You choose both. I'll explain. You go, all right. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go in the middle here and in the middle here. All right, so in the middle up here, <coughs> apologies, I don't know why that's got stuck in my throat. I'm gonna add seven plus 13 plus six plus 14. I'm gonna then go ahead and divide it by four. Now I get 20, 20, the answer there is 10 because that's 20 and that's 20. Now, for this one, I'm going to go six and a half. Oh, sorry, not that one. Six and a half plus 14 plus six plus 13. <clears throat> divided by four, I get 39.5 divided by four, which I think will be 9.75. But we'll just check. Uh, what was it? It was 39.5 divided by four, which is oh, it's 9.875, sorry. <clears throat> 9.875, and then you know what I do? I go 10 plus 9.875 divided by two. <coughs> plus 10 and I divide by two. And I get an answer of nine point, I'm just gonna say nine four. That's my mean smoothed position. So it's an extra step. You need to do two steps. Whereas this one, it was one step. It was pretty straightforward. This one here, it's not. You need to do two steps. Um, and this one's a bit of a pain to do. As you can see here, I cannot find one for this, 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 and this. So there's a lot of values you won't be able to do it for on the ends, um, but that's sort of how you go about it. And you use a table like this. Then median smoothing, median smoothing is so much easier. You look at the graph and you go, all right, these three data points, which one is in the middle? This one's in the middle, so this is what it is. So as you can see here, we'll do this one here. So we're doing this data point here. So if I look at five, I'm gonna use this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All right, let's go from top to bottom. This is at the top, this is next, this is next, this is next, this is next. So what's my median? My median is the three. So this data point here is going to fall there according to median smoothing. So that's where my next one would be. It actually wouldn't be a circle, it would be all X. That's what they've used. <coughs> that's where it would be. And that would be my data point there. So that's how you go about that there. Uh, so it says, the question here is five median smoothing has been used to smooth the time series plot above. The first four smooth means are da da da, the five mean smoothing um, values with X crossed on the time series above. And then I'm assuming that they want you to go and do more of them. Um, 
I'm not going to go ahead and do all of it, but that's essentially how you go about it. <clears throat> What's really important with the five mean smoothing, you're not going to have a point here and here. You're not going to have a point here and here. So you'd only have to do one, two, three, four, five points here to get your two marks. So um, another way that can um, that we can help make data more easily readable, or you know, looking at the trends and stuff like that. Readable is a terrible word, but less. <clears throat> is through the use of seasonal indices. So this is where things get a little bit messy. Um, and what I like to say is try and step these out, have an example in your book and go through the different steps in your example. Say, all right, I'm starting at step one, then step two, then step three, then step four, then step five. And you look at those steps and you work through those steps like that. <laughs> so sometimes we want to compare and make regression lines, um, say perhaps for sale figures for a business, um, and for time, usually for time series data. Um, however, seasonality can make it hard to accurately get a linear relationship. So to overcome this, you know, seasonality, which is where maybe every Christmas you're looking at a department store, you get more sales. Makes sense. Um, or, you know, you're looking at, I don't even know, you're looking at like a, a rental business and a rental business in the start of the year when everyone's, you know, moving around for new jobs and uni and school, that's when it's going to be most busy. So to overcome these effects um, of seasonality, we can de-seasonalize our data using seasonal indices. So seasonal index is the value over the season divided by the seasonal average. So if we add all the seasonal indices up, we should get the number of seasons equaling, we should get the number to equal the number of seasons. So generally this is four because we'll look at quarters. That's generally what we use. So <coughs> What I'm saying here is you get the average of all the seasons, you divide the value of whatever season is. So let's just say you had sales and you had a hundred in summer, <clears throat> you had 70 in autumn, you had 60 in winter, and then you had 90 in spring. What you do is you add those four numbers up, you divide them by four, you get a value. So if I just did that very quickly, 100 plus 70 plus 60 plus 90. And I go ahead and I divide that by four, then I get 80. So I get 80 as my value. That's my seasonal average. And then I divide each of the values by it. So I go 100 divided by 80. I go 70 divided by 80. I go 60 divided by 80. I go 90 divided by 80. And essentially each of those is going to give me a value. When I add those four values up, it should equal four. So what does a seasonal index tell you? And each of those are a seasonal index. What does a seasonal index tell you? So if I get a seasonal index of 1.3, so in case, let's just do the first one, 100 divided by 80. <clears throat> 100 divided by 80 gives me a seasonal index of 1.25. So summer gave me a seasonal index of 1.25. What does that tell me? How do I interpret that? A seasonal index of 1.25 tells me that the sales for summer were 25% above the average. So I get 25% more sales in summer on average. So that's what that means there. As a seasonal index of 1.3 during summer, so this is 1.3 for this one, tells us the figures are 30% above average. If the seasonal index is 0 0.87 for winter, it tells me that we are 13% below the average. So that's how we operate with seasonal indices. So then there's this really common question where they say correct for seasonal, for correct for seasonality with the seasonal index. Students always get this wrong. It's one of those ones that's really commonly screwed up um, and it's one of the ones that you just have to learn how to do it to get it right. So if I have a seasonal index of 0 0.8, to correct for seasonality, we need to increase the figures for January by what? I want everyone to have a quick think. Um, for those of you watching the recording, just pause and have a quick think. For those of you who are watching the premiere, just take like two seconds to have a think, like five seconds to have a think, like five, four, three, two, one. So what did you think? Just what did you think the answer was there? What do you think you need to increase by? I'm assuming a lot of you, those of you who haven't done this, so maybe like 60% of you may not have done a question like this yet, would have said 20%. This is at, this is at 80, so it's at 0 0.8, so it's 20% below. So you would assume to get back to average, you need to increase by 20%. I'm sure that's what a lot of you are thinking. That's actually wrong. That there is wrong. How you actually 
correct for seasonality is you go one over your seasonal index, which was 0.8. If you put that in your calculator, so if I go one divided by 0.8, I get an answer of 1.25. What that means is I need 125% of what I have. I need to increase by 25%. Now you might say to me, but wouldn't that make the answer 0.25? So wouldn't that make it 105% of sales? It actually doesn't. What it's saying is I need 25% of not what the total sales, if I was at average, I want 25% of this. So if my sales are 0.8, I need to increase by 0.2. What percentage of 0.2 is 0, what percentage of 0.8 is 0.2? Well, it's 25% of it. So I need to increase 25% of my 0.8. 25% of my 0.8 is another 0.2. You add that on, you get one. So that's where these questions are a little bit difficult. You just need to do this. Now, what if I was at like 1.2? Well, then you go one divided by 1.2, one divided by 1.2, I get an answer of 0.83. So therefore I need to reduce my sales by 17% to get back to seasonal, um, to correct for seasonality. That is reduced by 17%. So hopefully, that sort of makes sense how that works because um, that's quite difficult. Now, what's really important is then you can de-seasonalize data. I'm sure you've been through this multiple times, but seasonalizing data, you were going to de-seasonalize to get a line of best fit and then you're going to re-seasonalize the data for your equation. Now, I'm not going to go through an example for this. Here are the formulas. What's really important is the steps. Just know how to do your steps, how to make a line of best fit when you have seasonality. These are the steps. These are really important to have in your data booklet, I or your, data, your summary book or your bound reference. My other thing with this is it's really important to have um, a example with it and say, all right, this is the example for each step and go through a big example. So, you know, you calculate your seasonal indices, you de-seasonalize your data. Um, so once you de-seasonalize your data, you fit a line of best fit to the de-seasonalized data, you make predict predictions and you get de-seasonalized predictions, then you need to re-seasonalize those predictions to get the real prediction. So it's a long process, but it's something you have to do. Um, so hopefully those steps make sense to those of you who have done it. If you haven't done it, those steps are not gonna make a lot of sense, but we're not really gonna go through that today because it's quite an in-depth thing and we don't really have the time for it given I wanna spend a bit of time on finance. So that's the